All right, guys, welcome back to Formula One News. With Mercedes and Lewis Hamilton making massive progress over the last few races, Mercedes apparently believe they have the best understanding of their car with regard to porpoising on the entire grid. That might leave them in a great spot to bring upgrades for the second half of the season, and they're also convinced that this new technical directive will hurt Red Bull and Ferrari more than it will hurt themselves. Very much intrigued to your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you are new as always. I'd greatly appreciate it. Really helps on the channel. Thank you very much indeed. For doing that one. Let's talk about this then, right? Because Hamilton is on a remarkable streak of podiums given the car that he's had, of course, so far this season. Five podiums now in a row, his sixth so far this season in Hungary, P3, P3, P3. So he's got three third places in a row, two second places in a row. You know, the pattern would be that he gets first in Spa, which that seems unlikely, but who knows what sort of cars turn up in Spa with the technical directive coming into play. And the fact that Red Bull already have a sizable championship advantage, they probably might think, look, let's just focus on next year's car and if our current year's car gets worse because this new TD doesn't really matter because we're going to win both championships anyway it does currently seem. Just to mention this on Hamilton as well, cool little story where he's invested and become one of the owners in the Denver Broncos. Here's our Roscoe right here with this kind of outfit on. I thought it was pretty cool but he yeah, honoured to work with a world class team. So I thought it was pretty cool. Hamilton said after his race that he's got some things in the works and this seemingly is one of them announced just a couple of days after the Grand Prix concluded. Wanted to mention this as well because all this talk the last couple of years ago, okay, Honda, they want to leave F1. They are are staying as Red Bull's partner on power unit support until the end of 2025. In 2026, we believe that the Porsche agreement comes into effect with Red Bull, and that is going to be the partnership going forward. And if Honda want to stay in F1, they might have to find another team. But uh, yes, they've confirmed that until 2025, the end of the current regulations in terms of engines, like they're going to still be partnered with Honda. From then, we believe the Porsche announcement is coming very soon indeed. And as is described right here, Honda has made an offer to Red Bull for 2026, seemingly because they saw what Porsche were planning with Red Bull, the purchasing of 50%, which is the present rumor. But it still seems likely that yes, probably the Porsche deal will go ahead as Michael Schmidt says here. I know someone who works a lot with engine parts and he says, don't underestimate Porsche. They have a lot of knowledge also on the area of the combustion engine. Red Bull isn't just getting a lot of know-how in the electrical area. Could be a fearsome partnership with engine regulations changing from 2026. Let's talk Mercedes, right? Because this weekend was kind of remarkable. Norris in no man's land, but everyone else was miles behind and then there were the front six cars that were effectively all at times seemingly competing for a podium spot. Hamilton was probably the closest to the leaders for quite some time this season, especially because his medium tyre stint at the start wasn't particularly strong. I mean, he was stuck behind Norris for a bit, gets past, and then has a solid stint after that, puts a little bit of distance between himself and Verstappen, but got more comfortable as the race progressed. When he went onto the soft for the final stint, he was the quickest man on track, banging in fastest lap after fastest lap, overturning like a 10 second gap on site within about five laps on the same tyres. So Hamilton, honestly, I think the 0.2 seconds behind, two tenths behind off the leader pace of Leclerc for a time, of course, like, um, you know, seems pretty good, but it might even be better than that on some metrics. Russell was a bit further behind, about three tenths off the pace theoretically, but the discussion was there that, okay, look, he was in a battle for a long time with the front runners, right? So he's going to burn up his tyres a bit more than others and struggle as the race progressed in terms of maintaining pace. Now, Mercedes, apparently, according to Michael Schmidt from Amos, believe that they have the best understanding of their car on the grid right now with regard to the bouncing and the porpoising effect. Now they are working to get the downforce back that they had to remove due to the issue, right? That's the thing. In order to deal with the bouncing problem, they had to change their floor, make it, I think, stiffer. I think the flexible floor, not the flexi floor issue with regard to the plank at the bottom of the car, but I think the floor at the side of the car, they had to really stiffen up the bodywork that kind of almost touches the ground at the side because I think if it was like moving around at all, that would uh, affect the porpoising phenomenon quite badly, which seemingly the other teams understood slightly before Mercedes. Apparently, they have the best understanding now on the grid, they at least believe, and that means that they put themselves in a nice position to actually just focus on getting the downforce back, because even Ferrari, they sometimes still pause a bit, right? That car does seem somewhat prone to it, and Mercedes say, look, we perfectly understand it now, therefore we can just get back to addressing our weaknesses in terms of downforce, and get back to being potentially the fastest car on the grid, especially because of the new technical directive coming into play. As Michael Schmidt goes on to say, he says Mercedes are convinced the Ferrari and Red Bull will lose two or three tenths due to this new technical directive. So this is the other part of the flexi floor discussion, the plank at the bottom of the car that apparently Ferrari and Red Bull have, have well been exploiting the rules so that they can allow it to flex more than it should. And Mercedes have been following the rules by the book and this allows them to run the car in a slightly different manner that apparently will gain them two or three tenths of a second every single lap. Now if that is the case, Mercedes should be right back in the running come a few weeks time when the TD does officially come in for Spa. Schmidt does say though, I'm not actually sure about 
about that, whether that will actually lose these teams two or three tenths, because apparently Ferrari and Red Bull have been rather relaxed about this TT. They're more concerned about next year's floor changes that apparently are going to be announced very soon. I'm sure we'll talk about them tomorrow if they are at least confirmed. Juliana de Kessa says that Ferrari and Red Bull aren't worried about next year's changes, more like they're frustrated with the fact that they're even possible, but I'm sure we'll talk about that discussion, right? But yes, George Russell has said that it, like, he made it very blunt, actually, that, it, yeah, he does believe, the team believes, that Ferrari and Red Bull are exploiting the rules in the way with the flexi flaws and getting rid of them, as they will have to from Spa when the directive changes how the FIA are testing, and they can't exploit the loophole that they were up until this part of the season, supposedly. Mercedes say that, yeah, if they were to do that for their car, that would lose them two or three tenths of a second. Maybe Red Bull and Ferrari are different. They seem to believe that it's not going to affect them at all. But why exactly would they do that to their car in the first place if they didn't think that there was a performance advantage to be gained before the season began? So Mercedes not only believe that they have the best understanding of the bouncing and therefore can develop their car in the best possible way going forwards, but also that they might straight up just be back on level terms come at two spark due to the TD coming in. So we'll see if any of that plays out in, in reality. And just to mention this to close out the video, George Russell and Lewis Hamilton appearing on the most positions gained so far this season, largely because they of course have struggles in qualifying pace and had to make up positions, but it's actually Albon Latifi and then it, well, it's all Mercedes power cars, actually Stroll and Vettel leading the most positions gained so far this year. Generally, list of bad qualifying cars. But very much in Twitter, your thoughts on all this stuff in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new as always. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time.